Hey guys, I'm going to be going over some helpful tips and tricks. These are either questions that I've been asked a lot about or things that I find would be helpful. And of course, if you are a spark driver um, and you have anything to add, please do so in the comments to help out anybody that may be new to driving. So number one would be knowing your Walmart locations. This is very important and I'll go and show you where you can see all of your Walmart locations, the vicinity, as well as the store number. Now getting to know your store number is very important. I believe I have about five Walmart locations in my zone and out of those five only two of them are close to me. So again getting to know your Walmarts, which ones are close to you, which ones are convenient, get to know the store number. That way when an offer pulls up you're not having to like scramble around and figure out how far you are from that Walmart. You'll know exactly by the store number where that Walmart is and I'll show you how to find that in a moment. But for example, I'll show an offer like this, $22.61 for 5.6 miles. And I won't take it and people will be like, why didn't you take that? That's a good offer. Yes, it's a very good offer, except the thing that you have to take into consideration with the Spark driver offers is the mileage. So yes, the miles looks good, but the mileage is from the store to the customer, not from where I'm currently at to the store. The customer. So basically this particular location is about 20 minutes from me. So I'd have to drive 20 minutes to this particular Walmart location and then I would have 5.6 miles until drop off to the customer. So that's going to put me really far out of my zone and if I can't get another order out there I'll have to travel back all the way back to my zone to get another offer. Now hopefully if you go all the way out there you can get another one because you're going out to that Walmart but you just never know if you're not familiar with that area. So to find out your zones in your area, you're gonna go down in the right hand corner and tap the button that says more with like the three little circles. And then second from the top, it says your zone, go ahead and tap on that. And then it will populate all the locations in your area. Mine has about five Walmart locations and about three advanced auto part locations, although I haven't seen any offers for those yet. The cool thing is it'll give you a graph to tell you how big busy the location is at certain times of the day. The other thing is if you tap on the location that you're interested in, it's also going to give you the store number, the address, and a little navy button off to the right so you can see how far that location is from you, which is helpful. Again, memorizing your store number comes in handy when the offers are coming in and you're trying to decide real quick which offer you want to take. The second helpful tip is a question that I get asked a lot and that is can you tell if it's an apartment or a house before accepting the offer and yes you can I'm gonna use that same offer that I had from earlier as an example so if you look under the dollar amount $22.61 there is a little arrow right under it if you tap on that arrow it will open up the offer and give you a breakdown of a lot of details within it but within those details you can see the customers address and you can tell if it's a house and you can tell if it's it's an apartment. Also off to the side, it will give you an item count. You can tap on the item count and it will give you the list of groceries that you'll be delivering, which is helpful, especially some people may have like an, you know, an injured knee or, you know, maybe their ankles irritated. I had that happen to me last year and you may not be able to climb the stairs for a bit because of your injured knee and you may only want to deliver to homes. And that way you can tell if it's a house or apartment plus all the details of what you're going to be delivering and that definitely comes in handy. My third tip is incentives. Who doesn't love incentives? I know I sure do. It's a little extra on top of your earnings so it's always nice when there's incentives something to work towards. So my tip is make sure you stay on top of your incentives. There are times where I didn't get the push notification. I didn't even realize there was an incentive and you go and look and you have a couple towards that incentive for example, maybe you need to do five deliveries and I'm looking at it. I've only done two. If I wouldn't have looked at it, I went home, then I wouldn't have known that I just needed three more to do for the evening to complete that five to get that extra bonus. So it's always good to look at your incentives. If you don't know where that is, you're going to go down in the bottom right hand corner, the three little circles where it says more. Go ahead and tap on that. And then it's the third from the top. It says incentive programs. Right now, I just have 
one, which is referred drivers get 100 and the driver gets 100 once they complete a certain amount of deliveries, which is nice. That's the only one that I have right now, but they're always being updated and changed because they do expire. So definitely pay attention to that. Again, it's an extra bonus on top of your current earnings, which is always nice. Number four tip is compensation for wait times. We all go through this. It happens. It comes with the territory. There are days where they're short staffed. We're having to wait longer than we would want to. Um, it happens. And what Spark Driver states is the question first, will I be compensated if I have to wait at the store? And that is the question. They say, yes, if you arrive to a store on time within 15 minutes of the scheduled pickup time and encounter an excessive wait, you will see the additional compensation reflected as extra effort in your earnings tab, which is nice because like I said, there are times where you show up and it even may be an ASAP pickup and you're still having to wait due to either short staffing or it's just really busy. So that is definitely something nice to know that you are indeed compensated if you're having to wait. Next tip would be changing your current zone. So let's say you were moving to another state or maybe you were going to visit family for the summer and you still wanted to deliver with spark driver you can change your zone which is awesome so we're gonna go back to the right hand corner says more go ahead and tap on that it is the second from the top your zone you tap on that and in the right hand corner it says change go ahead and tap on that and then you can put in a zip code where you want to uh, potentially deliver at so I'm gonna go ahead and put in a zip code that I know and it's gonna give me three other locations within that zip code of where I can deliver, which is pretty cool. And it says you can only be assigned to one delivery zone at a time, but you can change zones as often as you like, which is super nice. Makes it convenient if you're moving around or maybe you're going somewhere to visit for a while. Super nice that you can change zones and still potentially be able to deliver with Spark Driver. My next tip would be pairing a food delivery with your spark order now this has to be done just right so what I'm talking about let's say you get now this wouldn't be on ASAP orders um, this would be on a 45 after the hour pickup so typically you'll have about 30 to 20 minutes before you have to be at Walmart or whatever location you're going to to pick up your order now sometimes if you get the right offer you can do a food delivery order in between your pickup time so what I always look for is a really low miles restaurants that I'm familiar with that don't have long wait times that way I can just go pick up the food delivery order drop it off and be to the Walmart location on time to pick up my order and get it dropped off to the customer on time so that can maximize your earnings during that time frame if you're able to fit one in but you don't want to fit a food delivery offer in if it has high miles miles or if it's at a restaurant that you're going to be having to wait for a while that would make you late to picking up your order which you do not want to do another tip is when you're going to pick up your order at whatever location for me it's always Walmart I always like to scan through the grocery items that I'm picking up I'm looking for eggs chips that type of stuff that way I kind of have an idea of what I'm delivering but when I get my car loaded by the associate I like to go back there kind of take a one over I've ran into a few situations where one the eggs weren't marked fragile sometimes they'll put stickers on there and I'm looking around for the eggs and come to find out the eggs are at the bottom of the bag with a bunch of cans on top which <laughs> the customer is going to more than likely end up with broken eggs, especially if I'm not realizing which bag has the eggs in it. And then there's cans on top of it. Same with chips, chips being at the bottom of a bag and heavier things thrown on top. 
their chips are going to be smashed and the customer is not going to be happy. Just think of it as if you were the customer and you get your order and your eggs are at the bottom and there's a ton of cans piled on top or the same thing with your chips. You're not going to be happy. So that's why I kind of take a once over. I'll uh, pull the eggs out, kind of move things around, put them in their own bag. They should be in their own bag anyways. You don't want nothing on top of them to break the eggs. So that's just something to keep an eye out for. My next tip would be communication, whether that's with the store employee that you're picking up from. You've parked and you've been there a bit and you haven't had anybody check in with you. You're not sure what's going on. If you see an employee check in with them, make sure they're aware that you are there. I've had instances where there has been glitches and it never came through that I was there. So communicating with the employee can really help out. They can usually give you an insight of what's going on. Same with the customer. I will communicate with the customer before I leave the location that I'm at, letting them know that I'm on my way with their order. A lot of the times I'll get a text message back saying, thanks, uh, a good reason to do this. This actually happened to my husband the other day. So my husband's delivering for Spark Driver. He's taking somebody's a Walmart order over to their home. Well, the customer comes out wondering what's going on. They had totally forgotten. They had ordered groceries. I'm sure they get notified within the app, but um, they obviously didn't get it. And sometimes people aren't near their phone or you know, the notification sound, they're just not really paying attention to it. So it can be a good idea to text them, let them know that you're on your way. Also, if it's a leave at door, knocking, ringing their bell, or even sending them a text message, letting them know that their order has been dropped off. If I was a customer, I know I would definitely appreciate that. Another tip, especially if it's late night, you're going on people's property. You don't know them. They don't know you. Again, they might have forgotten they ordered gross. Groceries. Um, I do have this vest that I will wear at late at night. This will show people that I am working and that way it, I don't look suspicious or anything like that, bringing bags up to somebody's door. The other thing that comes in really handy with late night deliveries is a flashlight. I have this high powered mini flashlight. It is very bright. It helps find addresses. It will help with dark locations where maybe no lights were left on as well as having some protection i also carry a pepper spray and i'll leave the links to all of these down below the next tip which i've had some comments on is telling the difference between a pickup order and a shopping order you can tell when the offer comes in and i'll put an example up right here one will state pickup the other one will state shopping and deliver if you would rather do the shopping and deliver you can accept that offer if you would rather just do a pickup order you can accept that offer you have the right to choose which offer works best for you and the last tip a question that I get asked a lot about which is cashing out earnings which is a good question you will need the branch wallet to do this now you should have received an email with a link to download the branch wallet so that way you can access your earnings if you haven't you can go to the app store and type in branch app it's a green logo with what looks to be like a white leaf spark driver states the branch wallet enables you to receive and manage money electronically with your branch wallet you can store and transfer funds spend and track your payment history through the app so definitely you'll want to download that app so you have access to your funds i hope this helped you guys out of course if you guys enjoyed the video please give this video a like consider subscribing if you haven't already ring the bell so you don't miss on any future videos and i will be seeing you guys on the next one bye guys